I'm Piers Campbellidge. Um, I have been working in investing, private equity investing in emerging markets for a number of years. At the moment, I and some partners are working together to build an investment manager investing in sustainable agriculture, primarily in Africa and Latin America. It's a company called Global Sustainable Capital Management based in London. Probably the biggest straightforward mistake is not being very clear. If you, if you waffle, if you're lost, you've lost it from the get-go. Go in very clearly from the beginning with a good strategy. Clear, concise, and just articulate it well. That is, I said earlier, don't worry about the 30-second elevator pitch, but actually this is where your elevator pitch comes in. This is where the investor has key points stuck in their mind from what you've said because that is the way this business is going to go and it's very clear, bang. And that's got to become almost the leitmotif or the sort of motto that they are going to be using when they are themselves talking to their colleagues, when they're talking to their investment committee, they need to be able to say, what is this business about? In very simple language and in three sentences. So that's the first thing. Don't be too fluffy. I've been looking very recently at a project in Africa in the energy sector. And the pitch, the presentation is so dense. It's got so much detail. It's got so many ideas in it. And it's just covered in pictures of generators and solar panels in Africa and so on. But I got lost. Mm. Frankly, I got lost. I was trying to say to myself, what are these people really trying to do? It's, it's, it's a picture book, but it's not actually a storybook. Okay? So be very clear and articulate. That's, that's important. Know your business. And this, you know, this is about mistakes. So what I'm telling you is things to do as opposed to just the dense. Mm -hmm. Do know your business very well. Know the market, know the competition, know what is going to be substitute products as well. Don't just think about direct competition, but think about product substitution. Know your pricing. And all of these should be translated into very clear assumptions in your business model. And it's got to be so easy for an investor to look and say, okay, so if the market is 25 million people, what happens if actually there is a problem and there is an economic challenge and actually your accessible market is only 15 million people? What does that really mean? Okay. Or what happens if there is a product that is similar to yours that comes on the market? Um, you know, instead of a solar panel, someone's able to produce uh, uh, little micro hydro plants in the river nearby. How does that knock your business sideways. Be very clear on your assumptions and very clear on, on, on that. Um, on the don'ts, don't have an irrationally optimistic business case. You know, it, it, we all love to see those graphs that go up there in the top right hand corner and none of us believe it. There's a, I was told by the chairman of, of, of a fund that I was working in many years ago and she said to me, um, she said, Piers, you know what we used to say in the business? You don't, there's no point going to the first board meeting after the investment because all they do is they actually show you the rebased business case where the graph goes flat as opposed to up to the top right hand corner. So there's no point going to it because you know it's going to happen anyway. That raises a key point. Look perhaps yourself at putting forward a pessimistic case. Don't just stick with your management case, the best case scenario. Actually put forward a case which says that's where we think it's going to go but if there are two bad harvests, this is where the product is going to be, or this is where our, our business is going to be. And that way you're helping the investors, because they're going to do that themselves, but you're helping them to understand that you've thought about it, that you've actually worked out what the implications are. That is absolutely critical as part of this building confidence as well, which I talked about earlier, building the trust with, with the investors. Other, other, other points, I think, that um, mistakes that sometimes come across, entrepreneurs don't always listen. Entrepreneurs are people with a lot of oomph, a lot of energy. They know they're right, and that's why we love them, because they're going to hit a wall and they go through the wall. They don't sort of run away from it, and that's why we love them. Sometimes it means they don't listen. 
and they get caught up in their own story, they get mesmerized by their business, and they don't actually listen to the, and see the signals that are coming back from the investors. Listen carefully. Just because you know, the investor is, if they're getting interested, they're going to start engaging in conversation, they're going to be wanting to talk to you, they're going to be wanting to ask you questions. Let them listen, think about their questions, because all of those questions are coming from some little doubt in the back of their mind that they want to try and understand. Help them to do that. Don't just stick on your pitch. Don't hustle. No. Don't speed them up. Don't push them. Don't be arrogant. You know your business better than they do, but they know an awful lot about business as well because they've been around the block a few times. And actually, just be your own nice, confident self. Okay. Now, in order to get there, one of the best things to do is practice. Get some friends, your mentor, and practice your pitch. Practice running through investor pitches before you meet the real live investor. Do your rehearsals. It, it sounds silly, it sounds simple. Very few people do it, but actually it makes a huge difference. That first, some people say, oh, well, you know, the first investor I see, that'll be my practice. Well, that's a pity because you've actually lost the possibility of catching that first investor. You, you may be lucky, but all you're doing is honing your skills on them, whereas actually you're trying to get money out of them. So practice, rehearse, get yourself ready for it. I suppose the final point really, um, don't embroider. Don't be, I said earlier, don't be irrationally optimistic, but also just don't embroider who you are. Don't go overboard describing your wonderful skills and capabilities. Be brutally honest about yourself. You can be positively honest, but be honest, because they're going to go into so much due diligence. They will be asking people, you know, is Jane really as good as she says she is? Has Joe actually done that? It sounds implausible. Was it really true? Wow, if it was, that's great. But don't over oversell yourself. Just be very honest um, and recognize that that due diligence is going to be very detailed. So really in conclusion on this, I think the key points are be very clear, concise, articulate about your strategy. Give them in three sentences buzzwords and the sense of the strategy so that they can repeat that to their colleagues. It sticks with them. Be very, very clear on that. Don't be irrationally optimistic. Don't don't try and put in a business plan that is just simply only going to work if all the stars are aligned. Be much more pragmatic. Thirdly, be very honest about what you can do and your team can do. Really describe yourselves very clearly and just don't over-exaggerate. And then finally, don't push, don't hustle. Listen to them and don't hustle and oversell. Thank you.